We are present this evening to journey with our Lord to the cross. Open yourselves to the Spirit as you listen to Alexander play. Here I am, send me. this sacrament and be nourished in, in body and spirit as 
they continue to be the church and followers without the presence of our Lord. Well, friends, tonight we're not physically together. So we will not be celebrating the sacrament like we do so often on Monday, Thursday. We will not be eating the bread. We will not be drinking from the cup. But we remember tonight the great love of our Lord. We remember his body that was broken for, him, for us, his blood that was shed. We remember and we know the grace which he showers upon our lives. We also remember how Jesus demonstrated another form of loving service by washing the dusty, dirty feet of the disciples. Jesus showed us and told us that we are to have love for one another. Now, he didn't just tell us. He showed us that loving service, those acts of loving kindness, are so important as in our life, our lives as disciples. Even if it may feel like a dirty and lowly job, we are called to love, to serve, and to care for one another. Friends, during this unique time in our world, find ways to follow our Lord, to show love to one another. We all need to experience this love. Let us pray. Oh God, you know that we are missing so many of our friends, our brothers and sisters. We are missing the special rituals that help our spirits in the season. May we feel your loving presence and the big hug of your grace wrapped around us, for we do see your loving grace tonight. Help us always to remember that your love for us so awesome, for you continue your journey to the cross for each and every one of us, and that we do find joy and we find hope. Amen. Let us journey with our Lord, as Don sings on the Via Dolorosa. Mm -hmm.
While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike him with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, No more of this. And he touched his ear and he healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple, and the elders who had come for him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, and the power of darkness.
Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else, on seeing him, said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and the scribes, gathered together, and they brought him to their council. They said, If you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, If I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. Then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We have found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is a messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests in the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod 
and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of the charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! Barabbas was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again. But they kept shouting, Crucify him! A third time he said to them, Why, what evil has he done? I have found him in no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. But they kept urgently demanding, with loud shouts, that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that the demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wish. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. A great number of the people followed him, and among them were women who were beating their breasts and wailing for him. But Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren, and the wounds that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also were crim who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching, but the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine, and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews.
It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Now there was a good and righteous man named Joseph, who, though a member of the council, had not agreed to their plan and action. He came from the Jewish town of Arimathea, and he was waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. This man went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. He then took it down, wrapped it in a linen cloth, and laid it in a rock-hewn tomb where no one had ever been laid. It was the day of preparation, and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath, they rested according to the command.
We are silence as we enter into Good Friday tomorrow. But we do that only in some darkness. For our Lord said, I am the light and I am the resurrection and the life. Enter with Jesus to the cross in the days that follow. Amen.